remarks. First one is null vector. A vector having magnitude equal to zero is a null vector. It has no direction or it may have any direction. So it is the resultant of two vectors acting in opposite directions or multiple vectors in different directions. For example, two people pulling a rope in opposite directions with equal force. Second is, if the dot product of two vectors is zero and the cross product of the same vectors is zero, then either A or B or both must be a null vector or zero vector, which is represented by zero. Third is, dot product of two vectors is equal to mod A mod B cos theta. Cross product of two vectors is equal to mod A mod B sin theta n cap. That is the unit vector which is perpendicular to the plane. Then dot product of the same vectors is mod A square and the cross product of the same vector is equal to 0. As you can also see that if we uh, look upon the angle between the same vectors that will be 0. So sine of 0 is 0 so this cross product is also 0. And if you solve them in a determinant form, the formula, then also you get the cross product of the same vectors to be equal to 0. Now is the theorem. Last time we have done that necessary and sufficient condition for the vector function of the scalar variable t to have the constant magnitude is dot product of f vector and df by dt is equal to 0. And now we are going to do that. The necessary and sufficient condition for the vector function f to have constant direction. Now we are talking about the constant direction and the necessary and sufficient condition is cross product of f vector and df by dt is 0. Right? So let's start with the proof. So I take f vector be a vector function of scalar variable t and I take another vector that is capital F be the unit vector in the direction of this small f. Right? Then uh, we know the formula that this capital F the unit vector is equal to small f vector over mod of this small f vector which is equal to f vector over mod of small f vector is small f. Well, f is equal to mod of f vector. Fine. So from here we get f vector is equal to f into capital F vector which is your unit vector in the direction of this F vector right now therefore taking the derivative of this F vector which is equal to yes first function into the differentiation of the second function so I write first function then df by dt plus then the derivative of the first function and then this the second function second vector <coughs> which implies now i am taking the cross product of f vector with this df by dt which is equal to f vector cross product with this right hand side this is this is equal to now this is your scalar f it should go okay before that you have to put the value of f vector first what is the value for the f vector? It is f into capital F vector.
cross product f df over dt plus df by dt capital F vector. Now this is scalar, small f, this is also scalar. So these two multiply f square and we are having the cross product of f vector and df by dt. Is it clear? Okay. Then plus. This is df by dt is your scalar. It comes with the scalar. Multiply with the scalar f. And we are having the cross product of the same vectors. Very fine. Which is equal to, just now we have read in the remark that cross product of same vector is equal to 0. So we left up with f square f vector cross df by dt and this thing is 0. As cross product of the same vectors is equal to 0. So this is f square f cross df by dt. Alright. Alright. So let's mark this as 1. Now suppose f vector has constant direction, right? Because we are going to have this to be a constant direction which is given in the theorem. Then capital F vector is constant vector y as it is a unit vector in the direction of this small f vector, right? So if small f has a constant direction, so its unit vector is constant vector. Capital F vector to be a constant vector means means its derivative is 0 which implies df by dt equal to 0 implies yes Check your first equation, this one. Now your df by dt is 0, which means this cross product f with df by dt is 0. So from 1, we say f vector cross df by dt is equal to 0 which is a required necessary condition, right? Next, now the other way, conversely. Conversely, suppose we take this cross product to be equal to 0 and we have to show that f vector have constant direction, right? So conversely, suppose we are having this f cross df by dt to be equal to 0. Okay, they have already supposed f cross df by dt to be equal to 0. Let me uh, erase this. It's already written in the next page. So suppose f cross df by dt is equal to 0. Then from 1 we get what is your 1? This is your 1. Now, this cross product is 0. That means the right hand side is equal to 0. We are talking. So, we take this right hand side. F square, F vector. It's a cross product. DF by DT is equal to 0. Which implies... 
f vector cross df by dt is equal to 0. Why? Because this small f square is not constantly 0 as f square is not constantly 0. So this cross product is 0. Now since f vector is unit vector, unit vector means f vector is of constant length which means whenever you are having a vector with constant magnitude that means you are saying that its dot product with df by dt is equal to 0. Just the theorem we have done in the last video in the previous video so the dot product is 0 so from 2 and 3 we have what is 2 the cross product 0 what is 3 the dot product of the same vector 0. See, f cross df by dt is equal to 0 and f dot df by dt is also equal to 0. That means the dot product and the cross product of the same vectors is 0. Which implies either vector f or df by dt is 0. Right? Or both are 0. So we take this df by dt to be equal to 0 instead of f because f vector is the unit vector. So the other vector must be 0. So from 2 and 3 we have either f0 or df by dt 0 whenever we are having the dot and cross product simultaneously is equal to 0. So vector f cannot be 0, so I take df by dt, the other vector, to be equal to 0. Now derivative of f vector equal to 0 means f vector is constant. f vector is constant, which implies because it is a unit vector of small f vector. Now if the unit vector is constant, that means small f vector has a constant direction. Hence the condition is sufficient, right? So from this proof, from this theorem, we get remark that f vector is a constant vector function if and only if its derivative, that is df by dt, is equal to 0. Right? Oh, alright.